Party lineups is a presentation of Casey's General Store, Casey's famous for pizza. Now remember, when you look at the Ramblers starting lineup, again, no Lucas Williamson, but the good news is he started losing their first five games in the league, but it has made them stronger and made them a tighter knit unit. They're going to be a tough out in Arch Madness. Underway in Central Illinois. Last time these two teams met, we have to go to Arch Madness 2018. Semi-final Saturday where the Ramblers came out on top of the Braves. Crutwig inside. That's the facet of this game that has improved. The ability to use the right hand inside. Wearing the face mask after being in in the game last week against the Drake Bulldogs. Last touch by the Braves, and the Ramblers will get the possession. Very important for Loyola to get off to a good start. They haven't been very good on the road, and this Bradley team has buried their opponent early, so it's very important for Loyola to get it going their way. Now, as coach mentioned, it is red hot right now. But we're trying to get some help. Marcus, fade away, short, Childs comes away with a miss. Bombre, nice handoff, Childs with the finish. That's the quick secondary offense that Bradley is looking to run. You and I saw Bradley in the first half of the regular season here in the Valley, and they were struggling with the one guy that, to me, really came out and gave them a lot of energy, if you will, was Luke Von Bray coming off the bench, and now he's starting for Coach Water here. And he is shooting the ball so much better than he was earlier in the season. He's been a key component. He's that third scorer that they were looking for. Here's Von Bray along with Dwayne Lodier Bougainlier, part of that original class of freshmen that were here four years ago that Brian Wardle came in here to Peoria and did a complete reclamation project, as everyone knows now. Great job by Skokin to die and Brown the ball. And stolen by Crutwig. The help side defense, so good for Loyola. Ogwap, one of the newcomers for the Ramblers this year. Missing on the drive. Childs just off the mark. You want to talk about defense. Eighth in the nation this week in scoring defense for the Ramblers. Custer from downtown. change his shot and falls a little short. But well, Bradley's got to be careful. They want to push the ball, but they don't want to take bad shots. And that's what Porter Moser wants from Skokna. Skokna could be the key guy in this five-man rotation as we go down the stretch. Lundy. Starting now 11 straight games for Brian Wardle. D'Lo on the drive. And Porter Moser doesn't like that defense right there. <laughs> uh, Lotier Gunley. He seems like he's been in a Bradley uniform for eight <laughs> years to opposing coaches. And probably a lot of guys who had to go up against him defensively. Remember, part of the all-defensive team in the Valley last season. Look against Von Bray, now facing a double team. Boy, what a quick move to the basket. And they get Ramblers basketball. Koch Barr checking in for the Braves. 
Notice the changing defenses by Bradley. First couple times Crutwick caught the ball, they single covered. Last couple of times they've come with the double, try and keep Loyola off balance. And there's the push off on Ogwa. Brown shooting 65% from beyond the arc in the last three games. Childs with his third shot of the opening stages of this one. And that's what Porter Moser wants. He wants Childs to shoot that 15, 17 footer. It takes him off the offensive glass. Scope. Nah. Trying to make a cut to the basket. And it's Rambler's basketball when we come back. Just underway here in Central Illinois. To have you alongside here on this Wednesday. One of the things we've seen, a more up-tempo Bradley team here over the last few games, which has provided more offense here lately, here, Coach. Well, they have tried to push the ball, but they want to be quick, but you don't want to hurry. You don't want to take bad shots just because you're open. It might not be the right shot. And that is last touched by Agunani, the freshman from Nigeria. Scott, you know you gotta have a hats off to Bradley coach Brian Wardle. He's done such a great job of keeping this team together. Started off so well conference then they go 0 and 5 a lot of teams would have broken apart and gone their separate ways but coach Ward the staff doing a great job getting them back in the hunt it's amazing the, the turnaround <laughs> it is Daryl Brown obviously their leader playing much better but it, guy like Lundy who has been so special especially on the defensive end it just really shows the character of these kids to battle through adversity and we got an offensive foul on the Ramblers to go back the other way you and I were here their opener against Northern Iowa and Ben Jacobson's team just basically blew them out of the arena it wasn't even close and then I was back here a couple of weeks ago and the Drake Bulldogs come in here and team again completely blew him out of the water and Gerald Brown was just tied up in knots offensively he couldn't find his rhythm at all it just shows you they stayed the course they didn't point fingers they just continued to work and good things happen when you continue to work four turnovers for the Braves already in the opening five plus minutes of the loyal defense does such a great job of taking away that next pass so that you have to throw the skip pass and that one a little bit too high for Canel. We gone Cox and now Skokna short on that attempt. Dilo. And there's Crutwig with the rebound. Towns, nice dish, and the finish by Crutwig. Old time basketball, pick and roll. There's no pick and pop in Loyola scheme. Bar, back to D'Lo. Nice box out there by Towns. Apis checking in for Porter squad, and now Towns wants to set the half court set. Nice pass there by Crutwig. Apis can't finish. 
tell you what, for a big man, Crutwood can really pass the basketball, can he? Uh, one of the best passing big men in the country. Forget about the conference. We're talking nationally. Just changes the complexion of the game. Graves right now one for the last six from the field. In fact, it's over a four-minute drought scoring. Darrell forces it up and gets it to drop. When you're as hot as Daryl Brown has been the last few weeks, those shots are going to go down. Gokna cut off, trying to get some help. Shot clock down to eight. Towns trying to get a pick. Custer throws it up. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Custer, who has struggled shooting the basketball, perhaps that'll get him on track. <laughs> wow. Boy, defense is just smothering for Loyola. There's Brown. Got a wide open look. That's off of Towns. And it'll be Bradley basketball when we come back. Wardle has done in changing things to kind of pick the pace up here a little bit in central Illinois down in the Ozark country. Dana's decided to kind of slow things down on the possessions and slow opponents down as well. If you inherit a program, you got to figure out how to use best your personnel. Great hustle play. We touched on Bradley already with four turnovers in this first half. Some of it they're just playing too fast for conditions. Well, only two for Loyola. In fact, the Ramblers only have 14 turnovers in the last two games. Stolen by Towns. Towns goes coast to coast. Canell, that's exactly what the doctor ordered for the Bradley Braves. Well, we talked about how well Daryl Brown has been playing offensively, but Nate Canell has really picked it up. All right, look at three white jerseys just surrounding Towns, and he gets beaten down to the floor. And Childs will pick up the foul. Marcus Towns making a statement to be the player of the year in this conference. We're going to watch him at both ends of the floor. First, he's going to read the passer's eyes, make the steal. Just a terrific job and help side reads it and then finishes strong. Young man from St. Joe's High School in New Jersey having a great senior year. Transfer from Fairway Dickinson and I think of Players of the Year, of course, the reigning Player of the Year in the Missouri Valley Conference is his teammate Clayton Custer, who's kind of touched on when you look at it from a scoring standpoint, isn't cranking up the numbers like he did just a year ago, but the Iowa State transfer, as Porter Moser was telling us, is doing all the little things that makes him still such a huge leader. And notice Marcus Towns as he goes out. He's got that design on the side of his head. He told me earlier that he changes it after a loss. He's superstitious, so I kidded with him that it'd be nice to have that design for the next two months. We'll see if it works out that way. You were talking about getting that too, right? Well, I'm thinking about it. I, I only wore the same suit. <laughs> Styles with a nice finish. I can tell you, one year I wore the same suit for 11 straight games and nobody would come near me. I knew something was stinky here tonight. <laughs> you set me up. I had to. <laughs> oh, it was a softball. <laughs> Apis in and out. Rebound taken by Deshaun Henry. Brown 
for three. That basket's got everybody in this arena into the game. 8-1 run for the Braves. Travel. Darrell Brown delivers so often. First you're going to see him with a nice dish after he draws the defense and then gets his feet set. And he is automatic. Six threes in their last game. He has been on fire. It's the old Daryl Brown. Mm-hmm. And Agudani's checking in for Cam Crutwig. Uh, somehow, Child lost his footing after the pass and another turnover by the Braves. on the drive. Boy, what a quick step to the hole. My goodness. Defensively, you've got to help on the ball screen on Towns because he's a guy, as you just saw, can turn that corner. Stolen by Custer. And the foul is called. Right. Call intentional. Yep. Pass away. And they help the helper, which creates steal opportunities as we see Custer miss that first one. They called the intentional as Custer had a, about two steps on the defender and was grabbed from behind. They'll get the ball at half court. We've talked so much about Loyola's defense, but Bradley has been very solid on the defensive end it's been the turnovers that has been their Achilles heel seven turnovers already a lot of activity underneath the basket and it looks like Franklin Agonani will pick up his second foul One thing that Loyola does so well is they switch the screens and they never seem to get beat inside when they have a mismatch. Fans wanted to travel, didn't get it. the other way to Bradley. Custer in his career, while a short one against Bradley, so he's got the second lowest points per game against any other, compared to any other team in the Missouri Valley Conference. There's a double team by Childs and he gets the skip pass. Inside, nicely done by Henry. Henry coming off a big game, 17 points. Gives them another dimension. He's banged up at the early part of the conference season. He looks to be at 100%. Brutwig. Oh. Keep the ball in the air, big fella. Great job. Again. Brave six of their last seven from the field after starting two for eight from field goal range. Down 
finds Crutwig again. Trying to get some help. Ugois. Hey, here, Porter Moses right next to us. He wants to try to get a three-point opportunity for his guy. Brown partially blocked by Crutwig. Towns on the break. And he traveled. Crutwig just a great job of catching the ball, keeping it up in the air. So well schooled. If you're a post guy, don't ever bring it down to the rug rats where they can knock it away. <laughs> you know, so often you see that a guy makes a great catch, brings it down, ends up getting knocked away. I love it from Cameron Crutwig. Great ball movement on the perimeter. Brown finding Child, or excuse me, Barr forces one up. Man, this defense for Loyal is just smothering. They're all over the place. on Koch Bar. This time with the right hand. Can't get it to roll in. Outstanding job of drawing two defenders. We see the Ramblers four-point advantage in the paint. But you can kind of see what Brian's defense is kind of squashing things in here a little bit. I think they're more open to let the guy shoot from the outside from Loyola instead of trying to get those easy Marcus buckets. But it doesn't make any difference from Marcus Towns. Oh, he's daring him to shoot the free ball. Ugwak. Gotch again, short on the fadeaway. Well, Bradley, if they want to try to shoot early in the possession clock, they're not getting that chance at all. We're seeing them with the shots when it's down to single digits, more times than not on their possession. Well, right now they're getting terrific dribble penetration, which is keeping them in the game, but Paul has got to move against this Loyola defense. And how about Crudwick? The patience, the nimble dancer's feet for the big guy. Canal trying to get a quick three. Towns, too strong. Coach Brian Wardle tells Daryl Brown, slow it down. Let's get a good shot. Henry's been successful on the last couple of drives, but again, cut off there, one and done on that possession. That's the other thing Loyal is doing, is not giving those second chance opportunities. Help side defense. Help side defense and the rotation on the shot has been fabulous. Aphis, a little long on that three attempt. They slowing down here offensively over the last 60 seconds or so for both of these offenses. Cuts the corner and off the finger tips of Henry, and there's D'Lo right there. Shot clock winding down over to mid left in this opening half. Koch Bar just throws it up, and they say he did not get the shot off as the buzzer sounded. 
Ramblers basketball will be another stop here, and the Ramblers can try to add to their six-point lead. Well, if you're Porter Moser, a quick shot, you go two for one. You called it, coach. Good look by Towns. First half time out with 12 ticks left of the show. Winners of five of the last seven. They've really turned things around, but this defense for Loyola has been absolutely suffocating in the opening 20 minutes. A look for them to give Daryl Brown some screens. Try and let him go one-on-one. -on -one. In and out. Childs crashing the boards. Gets the stick back. More than enough time for the Ramblers. The buzzer, and they're going to say no basket. Ugwa in the opening half, and I mentioned just five because he's the player of the week. It just went crazy last week for Bradley. The old Daryl Brown, as coach mentioned, in the opening half. Second half underway, and the Braves will have the first possession in this second 20 minutes of play in our Valley Game of the Week from Carver Arena in Central Illinois. Again, another possession down to single digits on the shot clock. Lundy forces that one up. There's an offensive rebound for Luke Von Bray. We saw it at the end of the first half with Childs getting the offensive rebound. This is a team that averages almost in the opening half. And I mentioned just five because he's the player of the week. It just went crazy last week for Bradley. The old Daryl Brown, as coach mentioned, in the opening half. Second half underway, and the Braves will have the first possession in this second 20 minutes of play in our Valley Game of the Week from Carver Arena in Central Illinois. Again, another possession down to single digits on the shot clock. Lundy forces that one up. There's an offensive rebound for Luke Von Bray. We saw it at the end of the first half with Childs getting the offensive rebound. This is a team that averages almost 10 offensive rebounds a game. They're going to have to try and generate some offense that way. There's a touch for Crutwig, facing a double team. Now Skokna hits his second three of the evening. Scotty, when he catches the ball clean, he is such a good shooter. But unfortunately, in that first half, he took a couple where he didn't catch it clean. Childs, too strong. Von Bray trying to keep it alive, does so. Luke. Well, right now he's doing it from the inside, but as you know, Coach C, over his career, but especially this year, Von Bray can also do it from the outside. You got to watch him. Gokner trying to hand it off to Crutwig. Surprised Skokner didn't shoot the three and he had it. Billy directing a little traffic. Boy, quick step by Brown on the baseline. The Custer forced him into help side defense that he thought was there. And Brown taking advantage of the no rotation. Good start for the Braves offensively here in the second 20 minutes of play. Rotwick on the double team. 
<laughs> I don't know if that was a pass or a shot. They'll take it. <laughs> Back to Von Bray again against Ugwa. on the cut and off the fingertips back the other way a much different pace in the opening three plus minutes of the second half than what we saw in the final ten minutes of the first half of play the Loyola much better movement in the half court just showing nothing for the movement but Bradley the aggressor offensively and has played very solid defense we talk about Loyola's help side rotation. Bradley has been outstanding here in the first four minutes. D'Lo with the jump stop. Nice head fake. Can't finish in an offensive foul is going to be called on Elijah Childs. Let's see if Loyola doesn't go through the high post. Not necessarily with a pass, but using the high post as a screener to get more movement with the ball, without the ball, I should say. Especially with Crutwick not in the game now. Big walk. Nice pass inside, Skokna. Brown for the tie. And that is going to make Coach Moser bad. He is going to be mad. They talked about it in the shoot around. Slicing through the defense like a hot knife and butter. That's what a senior does in key situations. Braves basketball when we come back. Uh -huh. Last night, by the way, De Silva finished with 17 points and seven rebounds in the Bears' victory against the Aces. First step, third tie of the Knights. Aguanani thought he was going to get help. A double team on the post from the baseline side. Help didn't come. Sounds weaving through traffic. And a foul is called. Scotty, watch Aguanani. He goes to the high side, assuming that there's going to be another defender coming. Nobody comes. And Childs, great read, terrific reaction. Nice finish. Crutwig comes back in. Now Custer takes a seat on the boiler bench. There's Cameron. Double team, stolen by Brown. Daryl to the free throw line and has a chance to give the Braves their first lead of the night. Folks, the NBC Fan Hangout is the perfect gathering place before and after games during Arch Madness. It's located at Ballpark Village in downtown St. Louis, just across the street from Bush Stadium. For additional information, visit archmadness.com slash fans. Brown, 70% from the charity stripe this season. These two teams split the two regular season meetings last year, and then it was the 
Ramblers, of course, coming away with the semifinal victory over the Braves in semifinal Saturday of Arch Madness, of course, and Porta Moser's team cruising all the way into the NCAAs in the Final Four. That was a terrific semifinal game. It was a, a five-minute scoring drought for Bradley that cost them at the end of the game, but their defense was outstanding, kept the game close even though they weren't scoring, much like tonight. And there you see, Florida's well, won three of the last four here in Peoria. <laughs> On their feet here at Carver. Uwak. And Uwak gets the deuce. Man. Love the interior passing. Fearless. Custer getting set to check back in. This is what makes Cameron Hutwick so dangerous. He absorbs the double team, and his vision allows him to see the open man. And a good up and under by Uwak. Nice job by here also to use that left hand to get the easy lay-in. But again, terrific pass by the sophomore from Algonquin, Illinois. The top freshman in the Missouri Valley Conference last year. You and I were talking to Peter Moser before tonight's game and just how nimble. He, he's so huge, but how nimble Frutwig is on his feet. He's got, dan has a he's got dancer's feet. feet. He does. And he dances through a rebound there off the miss. Passes up a three. Custer doesn't. D'Lo triple just off the mark and a whistle underneath. I think they're going to get Krukwick for a push. All right. no, that's Clayton. That's his first. Mon Lundy checking in for Brian Warhol's squad. It's at the Childs, gets a first step, challenge, no call. Nice front by Lundy, but somehow Crutwig, with those dancing shoes on, picked up the reception. Oh, and a nice triple. How about that from the freshman from Kansas, Cooper Capus. Coach Bozer talks about it. There's such a better offensive team when their off-brand guys are making shots. The solid defense. Terrific rotation by Uguak. And then the extra pass from Cutler. Just that little dribble pulled the defender away from Kafis, giving him enough room to get that shot off. Twelve twenty-eight remaining in this second half here from Peoria. Porter Moser still has his jacket on. 
<laughs> he sweat through that jacket. There may be ice under this floor, but it's getting hot in here. And a whistle away from the basketball. And it looks like Marcus Towns going to pick up the foul. And we're here in this last little minute or so, some fouls starting to add up for their visitors. Officials are starting to call it a little tighter. Players need to adjust. Canal. And the tie up ball and the jump ball call. Possession arrow to Loyola. Okay, Ogunle maybe didn't get it. Tied it up, but that will help them down the road. Mm. Brian Wardle definitely doesn't like the call. <laughs> uh, he thought there was a foul, but the officials saw it differently. Apis. Possessions for Bradley here again. Down to single digits on the shot clock. Lundy in the land of Giants. Tied at 38. going to pick up the foul. Ramblers pass nine turnovers in the opening 20 minutes. They have played nearly nine minutes of the second half and have yet to have one turnover. Well, they've cleaned it up. And they've also been stronger on the offensive glass. Six offensive rebounds, four here in the second half. Terrific attention to detail on that baseline out of bounds. Well scouted. Town spots up for three. How good has Bradley's defense been tonight? This is a team that has shot over 50%, only shooting at a 44% clip. I'll tell you one of the things I've noticed, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've noticed Daryl Brown's driving to the bucket a little bit more here in the second half compared to the last half. Oh, he's, he's done that with a purpose. In the first half, the couple of drives he had, there was no purpose to it. He was just, he was just trying to get a shot off. Here, he's actually trying to score. Canel's going to get that assist, but Lothier Ogunle with the hockey assist. Cutwood back it in on Bombre. Scotty, it starts off with D'Lo. He gets the dribble penetration. He makes the one assist. Cannell has a good shot. He gives it up for a great shot. Terrific unselfishness and a great flush by Childs. Cutwood right now 20 for his last 27 from the charity stripe. He started the season just 39 of 75. Hey, Valley fans, start planning your trip to St. Louis by downloading the Arch Madness app. It contains all the latest game day information, including special events involving team and other promotions and giveaways throughout the weekend. See you in St. Louis. Oh, it's going to be a crazy Arch Madness. Agodani now checking in for Crutwig. Important minutes here for Aguanani. Needs to counter Child's offensive ability inside. Brown. 
Mets, no. Ugua. Running the floor, gonna go coast to coast. And a little strong, and Von Bray is there to collect the miss. And Brown with the turnover, the first of the second half for the Braves. Daryl Brown, who has been so efficient here in the second half, and we're going to get a travel on the inbound. The officials obviously had a better angle than we did. Gary Maxwell, Jeb Hartness, and Tommy Short are officials as Brian Wardle. This could be a huge swing. Mm. Two-point lead is the largest the Braves have had here tonight, and it's all come in this second half. Ramblers led throughout the entire opening 20 minutes. And you're right, Coach C, man. They are really tightening things up. He's had a lot of fouls in the opening 10 and a half minutes of the second half. Now they called a moving screen away from the ball. Coach Ward will not happy with that call. I, gotta blame, I can't blame him. No advantage appeared to be gained. See if they don't get something for pounds here on this possession. Scope, they're trying to get it inside, and let's say last touch by Bradley. Folks, visit uh, participating Chinooks and Hy-Vee locations or ticket discount section at archmadness.com to get your Perino Dog Chow Family Fun Pack coupons. The Family Fun Pack will get you four tickets, four sodas, and two popcorns for only 75 bucks. Get your Perino Dog Chow Family Fun Pack today. Custer back in. Towns for three. And the threes are not falling for the Ramblers on the road tonight. Oh, Cameron, after I praised you for not bringing the ball down in the first half. Oh, you made me look bad. Keep it up. Well, if I call Von Bray a rug rat, though. I call Von Bray shooter's touch. That Brian Wardle could really count on, and he's provided a big spark here again tonight. Well, known primarily early in his career as just a three-point shooter. He has showed a variety of scoring moves this evening, but both him and D'Lo in that inaugural Brian Wardle class. Towns on a double team. Go to your senior. You need a basket? Go to your senior, Marcus Towns, who... Coming off a great week last week, has been shut down most of this evening. Just got into double figures. That's 14 straight games now in double figures for number five for the Ramblers. Bradley try and get something for Daryl Brown, perhaps coming off a screen. Brown just got it off at the buzzer. Terrific job by Cannell. Loyola got caught ball watching. 11 second half points for Dale Brown. Dalo gets the foul. Madness gets underway under the arch. Right now we've got some madness here in Central Illinois. Braves trying to knock off the defending champions as they have the Five-point lead at 46-41. Scotty, this is very similar to their Valparaiso game. As Coach Moser told us before the game, seven minutes to go, down nine, and all they talked about was getting stops in the next 20 possessions. They get the score there against Valparaiso. They had 10 straight stops. Let's see if they can do the same thing or if Bradley has the answer. Nice pass by Cannell and Childs will go for three. 
This is a well-designed, well-executed play. They know they have the mismatch. They double. And that's a tough rotation for Brentwick to get back. And as you can see, Kafis was on Daryl Brown. He wasn't going to suck in and give Daryl Brown another wide-open three. So Childs takes advantage. This is a completely different Bradley Braves scene than what I saw three, four weeks ago. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it really it, is. The confidence level, even when they're not making shots, their confidence is sky high. Guster. Really not get any chance to get any offensive glass. Only three offensive rebounds tonight on the road. That is not a forte of the Ramblers. They're a team that likes to send guys back so their defense is ready to play, but they're used to shooting at a higher percentage. is for three, and he misses everything. <laughs> Folks, the NBC TV network cameras make their way to the Holman Center in Terre Haute, Indiana on Saturday, February 16th, as the Indiana State Sycamores play host to the Salukis of Southern Illinois. Coverage gets underway at 11 a.m. Central Time on our network of stations. For more information, visit NBC-Sports.com. Interesting turn of events with Von Gray playing the post, guarding Prudwig. We'll see if Loyola tries to exploit it. Coach Moser wanted Custer to shoot that three. Towns wanted to walk Prudwig with the follow. Prudwig uh, now with 27 straight games of nine or more points. That is a big, big rebound. D'Lo, and a steal by Crutwig. Little pick and roll there between Crutwick and Custer. And they're gonna call a travel. I think Porter wanted the foul call too. <laughs> I don't know about that one. I gotta tell you, Crutwick didn't have an opportunity to come back down and was kind of pushed out of bounds. In the NBA, that would be the old force out call, but traveling is called right there. You can see Custer's hesitation to take the shot, forcing the pass into Crutwig. And with each miss or each turn down of a jump shot, the Bradley defense just closes in tighter to the basket. Again, Crutwig working on the defensive end, creating another turnover. And that's something in the first 10 minutes that Bradley did an exceptional job of doing is taking care of the basketball. Nine on the shot clock as it'll be Rambler's basketball. That's what college basketball should be about. Coaches exchanging ideas with fans. Terrific job. A great event. Nice job by Brown. Towns, great effort. Can't save it as he goes into the bench area. 
Down slow to get up. Will be shaken up or just perhaps tired. With the seven point lead, the idea of getting a shot in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock for Bradley is out the window right now. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's run some time off the clock. See if we can't get it at the end of it. Milk it. And that was with eight seconds left on the shot clock. A perfect offensive possession for Bradley. Largest lead for the Braves at nine. What hustle by Elijah Childs. Getting that offensive rebound from Henry Cutwood. His seventh offensive rebound of the evening. None bigger. Point shooter. Second career double double for Luke Von Bray. Hafis, the freshman with the big shot. You probably have one more possession to play it straight up if you're Loyola. And then it's going to be either foul or trap. Luke Towns. Crutwig inside has position. And Porter Moser burns his final timeout. Checking to see, all right, who's the right guy to foul? Right. Canell 65%, Daryl Brown 70, D'Lo 74. And nobody with three fouls for Loyola as it stands right now. Well, they're going to try and trap in the half. They're going to play it solid. Minute left. Childs on Crutwig. Crutwig with the rebound. Two possession game. Crutwig wide open. And he'll head to the charity strike. Defense all spread out on shooters. They were bound and determined not to give up the three. And Crutwig just going right down the middle. Mm, 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 mm. Well, it's steal or foul time if you're loyal or regardless of. This free throw goes in. Wow. Missed them both. He's got to play keep away to Bradley. Spread the floor. Now you got to make the free throws. His canal 65% free throw shooting. We're ahead of the free throw line with 34 seconds remaining. Henry, freshman from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Well, Henry comes in to basically play the perimeter. They're going to go with four guards so they can guard against the three-point shot. Childs being the only post guy, he'll match up with Crudwick. Boy, boy. With the 
say it, but two missed free throws by Crutwig could really loom large. Davis, the freshman, yep. At this point in time, with only 28 seconds, you really don't have the luxury of trying to determine who you would like to foul. Carol Miz, one of the hottest shooters in the Valley, is at the first <laughs> one right now, but you got to stop the clock. <laughs> Darrell Brown, who only had five points in the first half, has come alive here in the second. Third straight game now for Darrell with at least 20 points. Desperation. Nope. Kafis. No. Stolen. Brown. He's got a two on one and he'll pull it back out. Listen to the crowd here in Peoria. They appreciate this hard work and the stick to activity of this Braves team. And they had such a terrific non conference season and then started off 0 5. But they have stayed together and they've stayed the course. typifies his night. He has really struggled offensively. One of his previous five road games, averaging just under six points a game with 22% shooting from the field. And tonight, four points, one from five from the field, including one of four from beyond the arc. just as they did a year ago. They're going to knock off the Ramblers. Brian Wardles, Bradley Braves. Well, folks, they're back. They knock off the reigning champion.